Hello everyone, I'm Xantom, and today I'm going to be showing you how to fix the frets on one of these guitars. So this is the Xbox 360 Les Paul controller. Um, now, the, a common problem with these, these guitars is that when you, let's say, press a button in the game, there's a chance it might not register. Um, and if you're getting this problem where you're, you're clearly pressing a button down and it doesn't register, so like you're pressing green, you know, you playing a cool song like Through the Fire and the Flames, or whatever, and one of the buttons just doesn't register for some reason. You don't know why it just misses you for no reason. Um, it's because it's a very common problem with these guitars, and I've got a solution for you. Um, some people know about this, but I didn't when I first got one, and now I've got three of them. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I bought all three of them just because of this problem. Um, and then someone told me the fix to it, and I was like, oh, okay, I, I needn't have bought another two controllers, you know? Um, so hopefully it's going to save you a little bit of money rather than just chucking it out just because it doesn't work, you know, the, the, some of the frets don't work or, you know, save you from opening it all up and all that good stuff. Um, so there's a few things you'll need to know really. Um, it's, it's a very easy trick really, there's not much you need to it, you don't actually need to open this up, which is great. Uh, what you do need though is a bit of cardboard, now I just got this off of the box that this came in basically. Um, it was shipped to me through eBay, it was just a random cardboard box that he found somewhere, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's all you need, just a little bit of cardboard like this. This is actually a really big piece of cardboard for what you need. It's, you need a, a very tiny piece. Um, but this is basically how you do it. Um, so first of all, of all, what you need to do is actually unlock the neck from the body. So how you do this is there on the back, you'll see this little clip right here, that little clip. So you wanna kind of just push that all the way and then just, just kind of pull the neck off. It'll just slide off really, really easily. And that's part of the problem. Um, the reason why you need to do this trick is because it's not the buttons themselves. It is actually the connection between the contact points right there and the actual pins in here. It's actually the connection that's the problem. Um, because when they made this guitar, they made it too weak and they didn't make it strong enough to um, to actually hold in, in place properly. So of course, that means a couple of the frets will kind of conk out a little bit every now and then. Um, so first of all, yeah, you take the neck off, easy as pie. Um, then what you do is you also need to take the faceplate off. So this is a version with um, the sort of white bordered faceplate. If you don't know what the faceplate is, it's this little plastic layer that's right here. Um, on the back of the controller again, you'll see this little switch right here. Now originally when I got this, I thought it was kind of like to lock the neck in place, like some of the newer guitars have, like the World Tour and the Guitar 5. Um, they've actually got a little lock switch. Um, but it isn't a lock switch, this one. <clears throat> this is to take the faceplate off. So what happens is when you press that in, you can kind of see it. It'll kind of like try and pop this faceplate off, the little plastic bit. And it's really easy to take off. You just kind of rip it off like that. Sometimes it'll be a little bit, be a little bit more difficult to pull off. Um, so you just kind of want to move your finger around the edge and try and pop it off like one clip at a time. But yeah, it's really easy just to take this off, and it, you know, you, you can put it back on afterwards, it's just a bit more difficult to do that. Um, but I honestly prefer to play with the faceplate off anyway, um, simply because you get this extra sort of lip going around here, um, the actual strumbar area, which means you can rest your fingers on there and it, it makes it easier to find where it is. It also for some reason makes it feel a lot more mechanical, like a mechanical keyboard does, rather than, you know, just a solid plastic guitar that it is feels a lot more mechanical and sturdy this way, so I prefer it like this. Um, Alright, so now you've done that, um, now it's time to actually um, get the actual cardboard in place. Now, the, just saying, the reason why you take the faceplate off for this trick is because um, the faceplate goes up to about here on the actual controller when, um, when you've got it on, whereas you need all of this space right here, you need this additional little bit right here. Because this is where we're going to be, you know, using everything. This is what we're going to be using for. So, you need to get your cardboard. Like this. And rip a little bit off, okay? Just a little bit off. This is this should be the right sort of size, really. That sort of size. You don't need something that much bigger. And then kind of fold it in half as well. That's what you need to do. You need to fold it in half. So it's like a V-shape like that. Just a little V-shape of cardboard. And all you do is you put the cardboard in like this. So put one half of the V inside of the guitar hero controller, like that. 
don't know if you can see that. One half in there, and the other half should be sort of folding out like that. Um, this is where it becomes difficult because if you do want the faceplate on still, um, this is the point where you put the faceplate on with the cardboard still here, um, which isn't exactly easy to do with two hands because you know if you take your hands off of here, it'll more than likely just fall off. Um, so I'm not really going to show you how to do that, but you can do it. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, um, next of all, really, all you need to do is just slide this back on, the guitar neck back on, with a bit of cardboard in there, you see, and then just force in, okay, push it until you hear that click, you hear that click? That's the click you want to hear, and then you've done it, basically, that's all you need, um, and yeah, we've got a really, really sturdy one now, because um, you can always tell, right, if you push and pull the neck, like, try and push and pull it, so look, push, like, pull, if you do that and like with, with very little force it doesn't move at all um, that's when you know you've done it right you know you've done it perfectly right if you push and pull it like that um, and then there you go really that's that's basically it and then you shouldn't be having this problem anymore um, <clears throat> if you do still have problems um, I recommend using a like either a slightly thicker bit of cardboard um, or actually trying to open the guitar up from then on because that's basically how you need to fix it. I don't know much about opening them up. Um, I've never really opened up one before, but yeah, cardboard trick before anything else. Okay, um, really easy to do, um, and it should fix your non-responsive buttons. Um, and yeah, that's about it really. Um, yeah. Hope you have fun with Guitar Hero, and uh, yeah, I'll see you again soon. Twitch.tv slash Gaming. Follow me there.